Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that I can get this show on the road. So welcome everyone, good afternoon now. My name is Nicole Stevenson. I am the director of the Society of Professional Women program here at the Mainline Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to be here with us. This program would not be possible without the continued support of our members, our community, and most of all, our sponsors. Your involvement keeps SPW and the Chamber strong. Please allow me to share my screen now of those sponsors to thank them for all that they do for us. So our mission at SPW is to expand and accelerate the advancement of influence of women leaders of all professions and generations, strengthen our business community and support the region's nonprofit organizations. Please give all of our sponsors a virtual round of applause and support these businesses whenever possible. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. At the Mainline Chamber of Commerce, we are focused on connecting our members with business, leadership development, and talent. It is vital to the strength and recovery of our region, and we are responding to current affairs on multiple fronts. We encourage you to visit mlcc.org to view our many resources available and for updates on our information and events. Our next SPW event will be on Thursday, November 19th with author, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker, Yolanda Florna Perkins. She will be presenting on the importance of second chances, and you can register for that now at spwmainline.com. You can continue to help us serve you by communicating with the Mainline Chamber of Commerce staff, and also by interacting with us and others on social media using our hashtags, hashtag MLCC and hashtag SPWMainline. Thank you again for your support. So before introducing today's guests, I'd like to review a few of our housekeeping items. There is a chat and Q&A function at the bottom of your screens. Please remember to submit your questions in the Q&A function so it doesn't get lost in the chat function when it becomes time to get to them. Autumn will be answering questions for about 10 minutes after the presentation today. In order to continue our efforts to connect individuals with one another through networking towards today's end of today's program, we will be sending an attendee list today to all attendees and sponsors with information on how you can identify up to two individuals that you would like to have a 15 minute phone conversation with. And we will attempt to put you in touch with at least one of your two choices. You will also receive a copy of today's recording and it will be available on spwmainline.com. In addition, we will be hosting breakout sessions after Autumn's presentation and Q&A today. There will be a moderator in each room to direct the conversation. Thank you, moderators. Each attendee will have the opportunity to introduce themselves and their companies. The moderator will then lead the conversation with a proposed question from today's program to engage in the dialogue between the group of individuals. The link for the meeting rooms will be provided in the chat function now. So you can either click in and be held in a waiting room or you can save that link for later. And then we'll also provide that link in the chat function at the end of the program today. Please save this link now and have it easily accessible. I will be beginning the meeting with all of us together before splitting everyone up into groups. So please be patient with us during that process. As most of you know, giving back to the nonprofit community is a big part of the SPW mission. Today, we'd like to highlight Help Hope Live. Their mission is to support community-based fundraising for people with unmet medical expenses and related costs due to cell and organ transplants or catastrophic injuries and illnesses. Annually, they help place medical care within reach of about 3,000 families across the nation. Please support them and learn more by visiting their website at helphopelive.org. I'd like to thank Autumn Nessler for your flexibility while working with me and our organization to bring an engaging presentation to our audience virtually today. We're very appreciative of your time and attention and we look forward to hearing from you shortly. At SPW, we are proud to partner with many companies that live our mission and vision. Our exclusive employee benefits provider for over 30 years, USI, My Benefit Advisor, is one of those partners. It's my pleasure to introduce Senior Accounting Executive Lauren Papari to welcome our guest speaker today. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Nicole, for the opportunity to introduce today's presentation. 
As Nicole mentioned, my benefit advisor has been the endorsed employee benefits partner to the mainline Chamber of Commerce for over 30 years. Our commitment to the Chamber continues to evolve based on the demands of a quickly changing environment and the needs of its membership. Now, as we have faced one of the most significant impacts to our membership through COVID-19 and beyond, the, main, the MBA program continues to guide employers through the complexity of planning, communicating, and managing employee benefits. It is only with the support and the quick pivot of the mainline chamber to a 100% virtual environment that this relationship continues to grow and face challenges together in an entirely new way through 2020. Thank you to the mainline chamber, the SBW, and their team for truly committing to maintaining an engaging and outstanding presence over the past several months and beyond. I am so pleased to introduce Nancy Autumn Nessler, MS, who is a certified retirement options coach specializing in assisting midlife professional women to reinvent what's next. Her company, An Intentional Life LLC, helps women live life on their own terms. For example, living an intentional life. Autumn understands the power of a successful transition plan. Prior to retiring and starting her coaching practice, over the past 35 years, Autumn successfully transitioned from being an educator to career counselor to human resources professional and finally to sales professional, in between with gigs as a solopreneur. Personal transitions included raising other people's children, divorce, and many moves. Having recently downsized, she resides in Media, Pennsylvania with her husband, Carlo, and is enjoying living her intentional life. Autumn holds an MS in Counseling and Human Relations from Villanova University and a BS in, element, in Elementary Education, Special Education from Westchester University. She is also a Certified Retirement Options Coach. Please join me in welcoming to the virtual experience, Autumn Nessler. Lauren, thank you so much. And Nicole, thank you as always for all the great work you're doing. I uh, am looking forward to uh, having a great discussion today with everyone. So let's get started. I have a confession to make, and it's not something I share with too many people, or they might debate the state of my mental health. Here it is. I have some of the best one-on-one -on -one conversations with myself in ladies' room mirrors. Some of the best. I am my own one-person board of advisors. Join me, if you would, in a company restroom where I was a sales representative, and I had just lost a major sale. Now, I don't have to tell you, I was feeling pretty low at that point. Thumbnail about me at that moment, 35 years of working, four very different careers. 10 of the last years have been spent in sales. So losing a sale had an impact on me financially as well as emotionally. Like many of you, I was working 40 plus hours for my employer and then going home and working another 40 plus hours as spouse, mother, grandmother, daughter, caregiver, etc. I had no life outside of work. I was exhausted. Here's how that conversation went. Really? So now you're going to be in a slump for the next couple of days because you lost a big sale. Really? You need a life. What's your tombstone going to say? She worked? Well, so that was, that was fine and good. But the other side of my brain said, okay, so you leave the big job. So ask yourself this. Who will you be without your business card? What, when everyone else is doing the Monday to Friday thing, what will you be doing with all that unstructured time when everybody else is working? And purpose, what will your purpose be at that point? You know what you're doing now. You know how you contribute your time and your talents. What will you do in the future? And all those work, wonderful relationships you have currently, what will happen to that? I don't have to tell you what side of the brain went out. On went another coat of lipstick, back to the office I went to work on the next sale. Now you know, we all know, hindsight is 2020. We are brilliant when we look back. Here are some of the things that I know now that I wish I knew then that I'd like you to take away from today's discussion. First, I would have loved to understood 
what was happening for me at that moment? You know, what, what impact did that event have on me? Did, you know, what impact do changes and transitions play in a woman's life? And when those transitions happen, how, what strategies could I have utilized to better manage what was happening and to get through that period of transition? And an intentional life, I'm sorry, but I don't know about any of you, but I had no clue what it meant, either one, to live with intention or live life on my, on my own terms. And finally, I'm an action-oriented person, as I'm sure many of you are, and I would have loved to have understood what were some steps that I could have put in place going back to my desk that day or when I got home that afternoon to start thinking about and planning and living my own intentional life. So today's discussion is going to be very interactive. Uh, Nicole has been kind enough to co-facilitate this with me. So periodically, I'm going to be asking you to throw some things in the chat area. Also, if you have questions for me, I will carve out some time at the end. And I'd also like you to have something to write with. So in case you want to take some notes, you'll be able to do so. So let's get started. Here's your first opportunity. And Nicole, here's where I'd like you to give me some feedback. I'm going to describe for you two different groups of women. And I'd like you to tell me, group one or group two, where do you, where do you belong? So group one is a group of women who want and need to still work, but they want work to play a much smaller role in their life. And in fact, they want to take a look at all the roles that they're playing and maybe recreate, reimagine, redesign them. That's group one. Group two is definitely a group of women who are post-career. They are thinking about a post-career life of 20 to 30 years. And when they think about that, they want to run screaming from the room because honestly, they probably have spent more time planning the last two-week vacation than they ever have thought about planning for 20 to 30 years of life. So one or two. And Nicole, just give me some feedback to give me a sense of who's out there. Okay, I'm seeing group one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, another group one. Oh, I have a group two. <laughs> I have another group one. <laughs> what was it going to be? Is there usually more group one than group two? Or <laughs> well, it really, it's really a mixture. It really depends on, and since the good news is, you know, this is all virtual, I have no clue who's out there. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple more group ones and a group two coming in. So it's looking like more group ones than group two. One, Got it. I'm not hearing you, Nicole. Something's wrong with the uh, little bit of the vibration there. Can you hear me now, Nicole? Hey, Nicole, we're having some technical issues. Nicole? Nicole? You're frozen on my screen. We're frozen. <laughs> Nicole, I'm not sure if you're hearing me. I'm not sure if anybody's hearing me. <laughs> Nicole? Nicole? Oh, 
Oh, I'm not. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. Then I'm going to continue. Uh, thank you for that feedback. Uh, sorry about that. I, I'm glad that people can, can hear me. Um, I'm not uh, seeing Nicole, but uh, I'm glad everyone can hear me. So let me go back. So the good news for all of you is that uh, you are not alone, whether you were group one or group two. Uh, we didn't see the final numbers, but it sounds like there was more group ones in the audience. Uh, but the, the, you're amongst good friends because today there are millions of women out there who are thinking about what's next. You know, what would or could my life look like if or when I would leave the big job? You know, what, what, what could my life look like? And so that got me thinking about that. When I, when I saw that, I started thinking about women in the pandemic, right? We're living during this unprecedented time. And I was wondering what was, what was the impact of the pandemic on women? And here's what I found. As women, we are more impacted than men by the, by the pandemic. That being said, some of the reasons are that we make up the majority of the frontline essential workers, either in healthcare, the service industry, or primary caregivers. Bottom line, we make up a majority. Therefore, we're more at risk for COVID-19. Another reason was that even though men are now being responsible and taking on more of the division of household labor, as women, we're still the ones primarily responsible for the running of the household, as well as caregiving, if there's elder care or ch child care. And oh, by the way, now we're working from home and homeschooling and being responsible for our children's learning outcomes. I've looked at two different research studies. One was put out by Fairy Godboss. If those of you may know it, it is actually one of the largest online career communities for women, excellent resource. And they had done a survey and no surprise, women responded that they, they were working harder and longer than ever during the, during the pandemic, as well as they were so stressed. Either they had already lost their position or they were worried about what was going to happen after the pandemic, not only to their job, but to their company as a whole. But yet, given that, they still responded to the survey that they were still thinking about what's next. I also consulted the McKinsey study, and I know Nicole had um, recorded some of that information in the SBW newsletter in October. And the statistic that I found of most interest when it came to uh, the, the McKinsey study was that Due to COVID-19, one out of four women are thinking about downsizing their career or leaving the workforce entirely. Pretty staggering statistics. So I then decided to do my own, my own, um, <laughs> my own survey. And again, you don't have to put anything in the chat box, but just take a look at one of the questions from my survey. So I asked women, before the pandemic, was this a time in your life that you were thinking about what's next, maybe leaving the big job? And was that because you were planning your post-career or maybe having work play a smaller role? Now, here's what I, where I would you like you to respond. And I'm hoping that Nicole can be able to feed me some of that information. What are the three biggest concerns in thinking about this now? Take a look at those bullet points. And just, again, you don't have to you know, take the time to write everything out, but just throw in there some ideas about what's on your mind now and thinking about reinventing what's next or thinking about leaving the big job. What are your three biggest concerns? I'm back, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, hello. <laughs> this, this has never happened to me before, by the way. My apologies. Zoom just like totally kicked me out. Oh, that's okay. Well, we're, we're good to go. So. I don't know uh -huh. if anybody's saying anything in there about concerns that they have. I'm not getting anything yet. Oh, financial concerns. Okay. Oh, someone's raising their hand. Shall we allow them to talk? <laughs> I have a lot of financial concerns coming in. Actually, everybody has financial concerns so far. Oh, okay. I think they did that by accident. They're not raising their okay. hand anymore. Yeah, mostly financial financial concerns. Okay. Wow. Every five, six, mostly everyone is writing financial. Okay. Oh, here we go. Something new. Less ability to do things, example, travel, charity, events, etc. Yes, 
Absolutely, absolutely. So no surprise, here were the top three concerns that I got from the women that I surveyed. That's so funny, someone literally wrote terrible time to look and that is your exact <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you know, that what, what amazed me too is that again, given all that, given all these things that are happening, given these unprecedented you know, pres times in our history, why is it, I'm asked all the time, what is it about thinking about what's next? What prompts a woman to think in that way? Simply put, there's been some sort of event that's happened. The last child leaves for college. Somebody loses their job. We hit 50 plus. We end our marriage. Ourselves or our, our significant other experience health concerns. Something has happened that prompts us, even with all this going on, and maybe even because all this is going on, to think differently about the life that lies ahead. Now, I've even, these are the women that I coach. And the women that I coach, upon realizing that they have decades of life left, want to think about what would or could life look like if or when I left the big job. And I've even coined a term for this, as I call them my tribe. I call them waffly, women focused on living intentionally. Now, as I mentioned, there's been some sort of event, some sort of change that's happened. Now, change can be very exciting, right? And as women, we go through numerous changes throughout the life stages that we go through. And in fact, I will tell you that we've been 100% successful in negotiating and navigating all of that because we're here talking about it. And change can happen by choice. We accept the marriage proposal. It can happen by opportunity. We're given that great promotion. It can happen by a natural ending. We graduate from college. Or it can happen by being unwillingly imposed on us. Can anyone say pandemic? But given all that, the one thing that's constant in a woman's life is change. It's a constant. Now, again, I would love to know what change for those people who are thinking about the job becoming a smaller part or thinking about post-career, what change has happened in your life? Again, if you could put it in the, in the chat box for me, what change has happened in your life to get you thinking about what's next? Turning 65. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that will definitely do it. <laughs> Job relocation. Oh, okay. More time because they're not commuting to work. Oh, there you go. Husband's retirement. Okay. Looking good on that. That's all I got for now. So here's oh, what we know. Tired, tired of managing people. <laughs> <laughs> a, very, a very good point. Every, so, there's one more. Everything I ever had from working never made me feel fulfilled. Turning 40, things collapsing, trying to change my life. Ah, there you go. And a lot of people, a good point that someone just made because a lot of people, the pandemic has had some good impact. It's gotten us to sit back, to pause, to think differently. So there's been some positive things to come out of this time as well. So a lot of times people will use the term change and transition interchangeably, when in fact they're very, very different. So change is that external event that happens. The last child leaves for college. We graduate from college. Transition is, and I like to use this visual to explain transition. It's that time. Now, you know, you don't know how far that this woman has come on high heels, notice, through to get mid rope. We don't know what happened, what event happened, but we do know, and we don't know how far the other platform is, that new beginning. What we do know is right now she's in the gray zone, the neutral zone. We don't know if she has a safety net or not. And I will tell you that most women will do anything in their power 
to not have to deal with this period of transition. We want to get to the other side. We want to start something new. We don't want to sit back because maybe something's wrong with us if we're feeling awful about what's just happened. And no wonder. If you're familiar with the work of William Bridges, he did an amazing job of explaining the difference between changes and transitions and how to navigate both. And if you look at this chart, you can understand why most of us as women, we don't want to deal with that transition part. Because look at the emotions that are associated with transition. Look what happens to our productivity. I don't know about you, but I like it better on the other side. I like engagement, I like excitement, I like high energy. I'm not real fond of confusion and frustration and anger and apathy. So most of us, as I said, will do everything we can to not deal with that mid-rope time. One thing you've got to remember though is you have to get through that time. And that's one of the things that I'd like to talk to you about now. And here's a good opportunity for you to take some notes if you're interested. So I mentioned to you, I would have loved to have known when I was putting on that lipstick and going back to my desk, I would have loved to have known about some of these strategies. And I hope these will serve you well as well. First, as women, we tend not to do this, but stop, pause, take time for reflection. I heard a quote recently, creative reflection leads to personal reinvention. I love that. Creative reflection leads to personal reinvention. Again, most of us, we don't deal well with that pause. We don't carve out the time and space we need to do that. And the other thing we don't do so well at is we don't, we're not real great at being in the present. We're always thinking about the next thing on our list, the next role that we're juggling, the next to-do list, you know, the item on our to-do list that we have to get done. But it's important to just pause and look at what has just happened, that platform that we came from, that ending that just occurred. It's almost a grieving process that takes place. And we need to acknowledge that and we need to be okay with that and be with that. And part of being with that is to also understand where your level of control is. In some situations, if there are things beyond your control, let go of them. Let it go. Focus on those things that you do have control over. And part of that is, as women, we do the next one really, really well. Engage your support network, or as I like to say, your tribe. Here's a great quote again. You'll hear me throw out quotes because I love them. The sum total of who you are is based upon the five people you spend the most time with. So choose wisely. I love that. The sum total of who I am is based upon the five people I spend the most time with. So choose wisely. Now it's time to engage your support network. Let them know what you're going through. Let them know what it's like to be 65 or to, to deal with your husband's upcoming retirement or all the things that are concerning you at this moment running out of money, whatever it is, engage them. Ask them for their advice. Ask them for their help. Ask them to be with you. We do that really, really well for each other. And the key to all of this is practicing great self-care. Now, again, I would love to know if there's anything not on this list that you do whenever you're faced with a transition and ending has happened, something new hasn't happened, and the way you navigate a transition. Do you have any good strategies you can share with each other and can share with me? Because I'd love to add them to my list. Nicole, if you could take a look to see if anybody has and can put them in the chat box, that would be great. Surely, it takes a little while sometimes for people to yes. type out what you ask. But someone did mention from one of our earlier conversations that Someone in the restroom said they're thinking about retiring because their boss is mean to them. Ah. Which I thought was kind of interesting because I've always heard people leave people, not jobs. So Yes, very much so. Uh, never look back. No coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh. Nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I want to buy a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> Research options by asking others in the field. Yes. Mind mapping to dig deeper into what beliefs are truly connected to what is happening and the choices I have in front of me. Oh gosh, I love these. Fabulous. Set aside time for brainstorming sessions and journaling every day. A woman after my own heart. I do the exact same thing. <laughs> it has served me well. So please, I, I hope I'll be able to grab a, some of that list because I definitely want to add them to my own for navigating uh, transitions in my future because yes. I know there's lots of them. Yes, you will. I can send you the chat. And it says spiritual study and 100% agree on nothing, but tons of self-care has transformed my life in these periods. Oh, perfect. So I told you about conversations I have with myself in the ladies' room mirror. So he joined me for a very different conversation in an emergency room, bathroom, major hospital in Delaware. Here's how that conversation sounded. That's it. I'm done. No more. If I bring him home from this, I'm so done with all this nonsense. I've got to change. How many more times am I going to be able to bring him home? So what led to that conversation? Well, a few hours before I was sitting in, we were sitting in our home, front of a fireplace, drinking hot chocolate, blizzard blowing outside. The day before we had celebrated my husband's birthday, grandkids had been over. We were leaving a few days to go to uh, Florida to visit with friends. Fast forward a few hours, we had traveled through that blizzard by ambulance to get to the hospital. Myself and the nurse, only two people in the waiting room. Door opens from the back, out walks a priest. Now I would love to be able to tell you all that this was the beginning of a very bad joke, but it wasn't. He walks over to the nurse's station she looks up and points at me. Now, you can imagine, I'm sure many of you have experienced awful things in your life, but you can imagine the things that were going on in my head at that point. This wasn't our first rodeo. This wasn't our first heart event. But this time, as he's walking towards me, I'm saying, it's done. I've lost him. I have no more second chances. This, I'm not bringing him home this time. Now, I won't tell you all the things that happened after I left that lady's room, after I brought him home and we got back to normal. But suffice it to say that that led me to doing everything totally different in my life. I found a program that introduced me to this whole idea of intentional living. I became a certified coach so that I could work with other women who were dealing with life choices like mine. And I started an intentional life. But know that that conversation, that moment, was what did it for me. Now, okay, so intention is everything, right? But what exactly, what, how do you even begin to get your arms around this concept of intention and intentional life? Whereas I like to say, what the heck is living life with intention and intentional life? Here's the way I define it. So an intentional life or living with intention means having an aim for how you want to live your life. It's about defining what you want to like, what your life to look like, your lifestyle. Having a plan to move you towards that life and to do so by design, not by default or just letting it happen. Now the key terms in there for all of you are having an aim for how you want this life to be, defining your lifestyle, having a plan, and designing it, not thinking that it's just going to happen by chance. It doesn't. I needed to know more about intentional living, though, and what, what exactly that was, and some things I'd like you to get a clearer picture of. First, an intentional life is one that's based on examining and living your why. It's that internal voice. We're so busy with what I do, we forget about who I am. 
And that's really what intentional living is all about. It's also based on knowing your values, your beliefs, and your passions. I tell people all the time that really serves as a lens by which you can look at all your decisions, all the actions you want to take using the beliefs, values, and passions that you have. It also is not something that you just do and that you do it on weekends or on your two-week vacation. It's actually about your daily living. It incorporates all aspects of daily living, including all the roles that you play. It's also very unique to you. I wish I could say, and there's three models you can choose from. You're not a copied version of somebody else. It's you're uniquely yourself. This is the best version of yourself. And it's also not one that you just do once to cover decades of life. You do it on an annual basis. And finally, it's not about an ultimate final destination. It's about the direction you want to be going in at all times and living your life that way. Sounds awfully overwhelming. It did for me for a long time. Here's, again, an opportunity to take some notes. <clears throat> first things first, buy yourself a beautiful journal. Beautiful. The best you can find. Carve out this space and the time, and I know it's hard to do that, but please do that. Honor that time for yourself. Grab a cup of coffee or your favorite cocktail, and here's what I'd like you to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take stock of your experiences to date. Now, again, that's a tall order, but there's going to be certain life experience that you've had along the way that will stick out for you. And what I'd like you to do is to look at them from two perspectives. One, I want you to think about um, becoming a superb editor, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And the other thing I want you to take away is, what were some of the lessons you learned from those experiences? Now you're gonna ask yourself three questions for each of these experiences. One, what is something that I don't wanna have happen in the future? Don't wanna do that again. Two, think about the things that maybe you need to bring back into your life. When you think back on it, you're like, why did I ever give that up? Why did I ever, ever give up you know, having two or three vacations a year? What, why did I ever stop that? There's gotta be a way to be able to do that. And then three, what are the things that I wanna to continue to do that have served me well and will continue to serve me well in the future? The next and the hardest thing about doing all of this is reframing our perspective. And by that I mean, as women, we should ourselves to death. We should be the best employee. We should be the best wife, the best mother, the best homeschooler, right? Let's think about it differently. How about if we put me first? Now, I can't see you, but I know a lot of you are probably thinking, that sounds awfully selfish. We're not used to putting ourselves first. Think about the airplane. Who puts on the oxygen mask first? Actually, you need to look at this and that this time and this journaling, all the things you're doing as being a very selfless act. Because really, if you're becoming the best version of yourself, not only is it going to serve you well, but it's going to serve you well in all the different roles that you play. And part of that is you need to be thinking about your future self. And by that I mean, and I'm not talking a future self five or 10 years down the road. I'm talking about the next year. What does she look like? Really get a sense of who she is. Because there was a study even done by UCLA that said, if you can envision and actually write about your future self, you will do everything you can to take better care of yourself in order to be that person. So think about who she is, who you want to be just a year from now. How does one begin to invigorate thinking, though, to be thinking about that? Let me tell you a personal story about what helped me. I read this amazing article called Creating the Tapest Life, and I'd be more than happy to share it with you if you're interested. It was written by a guy, Andy Robin, out of Canada. I actually talked with him to get his permission to share his article. He's actually post-career, and so within the first like year and a half of his post-career life, he just had hit a wall. It just was not working for him at all. So he started envisioning what life could look like if he created a series of tapas, small plates that, and so he started thinking about what those small plates, what, what would he like to taste? 
So he knew that he wanted to do some consulting. He knew that he wanted to sit on some boards. He knew that he wanted to become more knowledgeable about wine. And the list went on. And what he told me was he would start planning his daily life, his weekly life around these small plates. And when one of them did not serve him well, he would just get rid of it, put something else in its place. Well, I love that. That to me was one of my aha moments, that article. So then I started thinking about the framework for my own intentional life. And I started thinking about as a cook, I cook everything by recipe. Don't get me started on why I do that, but I do. So I started thinking about my own intentional life as being the very best recipe that I could create. What would the ingredients be? Well, I knew the basics would be my beliefs, values, and passions. And I knew also that I would then have special ingredients. Like what was important to me? I knew that I wanted to learn. I knew that I wanted to do work of some sort, create, connect, wellness. These were all special ingredients. And what I realized when I did that was that I, was, I could take a lot of those ingredients and create all different types of dishes from them. And the other thing that helped me with, with thinking out of the box and invigorating my thinking was I gave myself two journal prop, prompts. Instead of dot, 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 what if I dot, dot, dot. So instead of working 40 plus hours a week for my employer after this pandemic, what if I took this time to map out a hybrid approach to take to my employer about how I'd like to work moving forward? What would that look like? I promise you by using those two prompts instead of, or what if I, it will create all sorts of fun things for you. You'll be thinking things you never thought you even thought about before. And of course, part of this whole thing with invigorating our thinking is we have to, I'm a big believer. I know some of you journal. I journal every day. And every day I journal a daily intention. But I have a list of intentions, the way I see my life. I am a person destined to live to 100 plus years of age. I am a person who fully engages in all the roles that I play. I am a person who gives back to the universe what the universe gives me. And I started writing out all my intentions. And the final thing about an action step to take is you need to put it in writing. <laughs> you need to plan it. It can't just be up here. Take that journal, write it out, set some goals, set some objectives and timeframes and commit to, it's always those small steps. Don't think too big, just take a small step each and every day to get through there. Now, again, one of my favorite quotes, because the best way to predict the future is to create it. Now, like I told you, things that you are gonna take away from today's discussion, and most importantly, I'm hoping that You've been motivated, invigorated yourself to start thinking differently about taking some action and moving forward. Or you can be like me, put the coat of lipstick back on and go back to the office. Always remember the choice is yours. Always remember. That being said, if you're interested in reinventing what's next, or you're wondering if in an intentional life plan might serve you well, I would love to hear your story. Here's how to contact me. But I know that Nicole had mentioned that she would be taking the opportunity after today's session to send you some things that I'd like to offer you as a result of being part of today's program. But I would really love to hear your story. I'm, I'm, uh, I hear some of the best stories from some of the best women. So please, please do that if, you, if you're so inclined. And I leave you with one final thought. It's been, first of all, it's been an honor to join you today. I look forward to seeing you all. As, as Nicole mentioned, I'm very actively engaged with SPW. So I look forward to seeing and meeting some of you at upcoming meetings. But in the interim, always remember one final message to give yourself. You've got this. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Nicole, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And then uh, if we have some questions, we'll be able to... Uh, Take some time to do that. How am I on timing, by the way? You're excellent. You are like right on. It is 1246. And yeah, I, I tell you what, all right? <laughs> you did all right. wonderful. So good information. Thank you. People are saying I've asked people to start um, putting questions into the Q&A box if they want to submit anonymously. If they okay. do not want to submit anonymously, 
then uh, they can raise their little hand. There's a raise oh. hand feature and I will actually allow you to talk to Autumn yourself. Um, so yeah, so it might be easier than trying to type it out, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. let me pull up a chair so I can sit down for a moment and then oh. I'd love to answer some questions. All right, absolutely. Well, I can that <laughs> All right, hopefully I'm not too short here. Okay, ask away. All right. Um, do you do intentional life planning on an annual basis? I do. So I'm asked a lot. I'm glad somebody asked that because I am asked often. So really, do you do all this stuff yourself? And the answer is yes. Actually, I, my husband and I, uh, who's still with me, by the way, and doing well, um, he and I go and do an annual retreat every year uh, between, usually between Christmas and New Year's or early January. And we take that time out of life to plan as a couple and individually. And I was hoping somebody would ask that because I'll share with you, I'm a big vision board person. And so this was last year's, <laughs> it certainly didn't expect the 2020 bingo card that we had, but uh, that's what came from last year's annual retreat. So the answer is yes. Uh, and actually a lot of those, what you're not seeing is I break down a lot of that into three months, six months, because I have the attention span of a gnat. So I try not to put too much pressure on myself and break it up into manageable pieces. So the answer is absolutely do it every year. Awesome, and I do have Lauren raising her hand, and she was with us earlier. Lauren, I have hit the allow to talk button, and I'm asking you to unmute. Did it unmute me? Can you hear me? It is, hi okay. Lauren. So Autumn, I love, I know that I have listened to you speak about what you do very briefly in many you know, mainline chamber events, but Today was great, and uh, I have a full appreciation for what you're doing to transform lives, um, 100%. I guess what caught my attention most is that transition phase that you showed, you know, in the beginning of the presentation. And I guess I'm looking for some tips of, you know, let's say you, you've started this process in so many ways, and what were your biggest tips for not getting hung up on time, you know, so not you know, these, these deadlines, like I work at things every single day to just keep myself, I would say sane, <laughs> you know, and peaceful <laughs> and inner peaceful. And, you know, definitely had a huge Reiki awakening last year. I'm a Reiki master in training. Oh. So I have done, you know, the gamut of trying to just keep myself from, uh, you know, not having this sense of urgency of time. And I would have to say 40 was a big one for me um, yeah. with no children, unmarried, you know, clean slate, really, which is exciting, yet sometimes uh, scary. So, you know, I guess I'm looking for to keep yourself calm, you know, throughout this process when you're going through it. What were your um, nuggets to teach us of like, how to take time and like really say, you know, I have the rest of my life to enjoy this if I just keep going and one step at a time, one year at a time, do this for myself. Thank you for, for sharing. And I want to talk to you more uh, at another event about Reiki. Um, but uh, no, I think part, part of it, Lauren, is that um, I try, one of the things is I try not to get too far ahead of myself. And by that, I mean, you know, I do take it a year at a time. You know, I was working with a woman who, like one of, uh, one of the people who's attending today, um, whose husband was planning to retire and she was panic stricken. Uh, and so part of what I said to her is all you need to think about is just the next 12 months. So I think first you have to set almost realistic timeframes about what you're trying to plan for and then get into a consistent habit of carving that time, whether it's a 15 minute, you know, when you first wake up, whether it's a, you know, a, a certain part of the weekend that you carve out just to do this kind of thing but to create either routines or rituals around this quiet time, that space, and to, and to honor that commitment to yourself. But know that, and every, like I said earlier, it's baby steps. It's not taking huge leaps. 
it, and then it's reflecting back on, hey, I took that step and look, I committed to it. I did it. This is great. I'm ready for the next step. So I think uh, time frame wise, only planning for a small part of time to creating this the, uh, consistent time during the week, even during the day, even if it's 15 minutes, and to acknowledge and reward all the little small steps that you've taken to move it forward. Does that help? I hope it does because I disconnected her talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it, did. it sounded good to me. Um, okay, and um, I'm just going to take one more question because I want to be respectful of everyone's time and get us into asking each other's questions and doing the networking part. So the last question, um, your idea about creating new dishes with ingredients that are unique to you, what is the favorite dish that you've created? Ah. Um, so I've tried to, and, and I make it even crazier, I try to also make it a seasonal dish, okay? So I, and plus, plus now, since most everything that I was used to doing is no longer, I've had to even be more creative. So I've tried to take those things that I've mentioned to you, uh, learn, you know, certainly working, creating, connecting, et cetera. And I look at my daily plan and try to incorporate those things into my daily plan. And I also, for the, for the creativity uh, piece, I've, I've tried to every day have something that makes it a little bit more flavorful. I love talking cooking. So, you know, like Mondays are cooking days actually for us. And so we carve out a part of the day to cook for the week. You know, Tuesdays are takeout Tuesday. You know, Thursdays are try something new Thursday. And again, it's not cooking. It's actually going and experiencing something. So we try to put some creativity, some unique flavor into the, that dish for that day. So it really is based on season. It's also based on knowing and honoring what's important to me and making sure that my daily plan, that, that menu for the day, incorporates all, all those different items that are important, those ingredients. Okay, wonderful. So that's that. I wanna um, thank you again, Autumn, and all of our guests today, including Lauren for introducing you and everyone for the time. So you'll have seen that Powell Davis has put our link in for the meeting room. So we will be sending the recording of today's event along with the follow-up items that Autumn discussed, our attendee list for introduction. So please remember to check your emails, take our survey. Um, please sign up for our next SPW event on November 19th with Yolanda Florna Perkins on the importance of second chances. Mm -hmm. You can also sign up for all the Mainline Chamber events at, at mlcc.org. And as always, you can let myself or any of our staff members know if there's anything that we can do for you and your business. Um, you can go to the meeting now. You might be placed in a waiting room, so I ask for your patience because I'm just going to make sure people are getting this link and transferring over. Uh, Stacey Rimel, our uh, manager of events and communications, is in that room. Um, so once again, thank you, Autumn, for your time. Thank you, Nicole. And I will have people get in touch with you if they need you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you thank all. Thank you. Okay, everyone, you can click on that meeting link that's in the chat function. Um, if you're having difficulty, let me know. I'm gonna wait in here, like I said, for about a minute or two while everyone's jumping to the next room. And Nicole, I can leave. It won't impact anything, correct? You're good. Okay. <laughs> Thank right. you. Well, bye.